Hello, um, so we've, we, we're putting together um, a, a little extra video, so we're, we're going to do um, an unboxing. Um, if you can see the, uh, the screen around you, it's just because we're, we're going to tie it into this. But with me we have Tarif, who is one of our uh, long-standing players, one of our originals, the OGs. Uh, OG. And Steve, who is one of our uh, DMs, who you may recognise from our Friday Night Fights live streams. Um, so. Rather than just doing an unboxing, we're going to get their thoughts and feelings on this kind of product that um, I, I spent some money on, and uh, we'll see what it is. So, without further ado, we shall unbox it. Um, I'm not going to show you the M&S bag, <laughs> but I am going to go and show you uh, what, what find the way around. Here it is. Right. So I've, I've got a little bit of context on this. Go ahead. That you paid forty pound. For the post and packaging. And yes. How long did you have it on for? Um, it was on order for, I think maybe two months, and then there was a four-week delay getting it into the UK from the US. Right. And it is heavy, um, but this is forty pounds postage. Wow. Um, so okay. it, it is quite um, <laughs> quite exp expensive, but I wanted it. I, I, and good thing to uh, so that if you at home know this, this is a Beadle and Grimm product. Uh, Beadle and Grimm's is owned by actor uh, Matthew Illard, um, who you know may know from uh, Scooby Doo, Scream, Hackers, and all that malarkey. And he has some uh, lifelong friends, like we do, who have been playing D and D since they were at school. And they started a company, a D and D company together called Beadle and Grimm. Beadle and Grimm is one of their some of their player characters uh, called uh, the Pandemonium Warehouse. And in that, they've started making uh, goodies to help DMs with their games. They did one before for Water Deep Dragon Heist. This is that was a big edition. Yeah. So to give you some context, that was five hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, that was the <laughs> platinum edition. This is a silver edition. Do you want to take a guess how much? Uh, two two fifty. Oh, good. Yeah. I was going to go one hundred fifty. Um, you're closer. So it was about one hundred and seventy-five. Um, dollars, yeah. so it comes down a little bit in price in pounds, yeah. um, but still with a forty pound postage, yeah. kicks it right up. <laughs> but if you have a just feel the weight, uh, it's quite. I like the, I like the bag. The, the, yeah. bur the it is proper burlap, as they I, I've I've seen a few uh, unboxing videos from the states, and they do say it. it's proper burlap, and it is. Oh, it goes <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> um, and it's all over the, the tablecloth as well. Yeah, so like excuse me, a cup of tea. I, I do like the bag. Yeah, the, the, the bag is nice. I think it's something that if we, if we had something behind us, we could put it on. Yeah. Um, I'd fill it up with some kind of pillow stuff in, yeah. and 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 just do it up. But even um, in the case it's like you're, you're in the D and D world. Yeah, I mean, so the, the Salt Marsh is a, a sleepy coastal town. <laughs> uh, well, at least that's how I've I've DM'd it. So I started um, a Salt Marsh campaign uh, already, and it didn't arrive in time because it was delayed. Yeah. So episode one has happened without any of this. Episode two, I had it just in time. I had, it came the day before. So I managed to uh, unpack it. So it's not a complete proper unboxing, but this is just, just to try to gauge people's views. Um, so yeah, this was $175. Um, it comes in a burlap bag. And inside, you get this. Um, I don't know, can we put that on? Do you need to, you don't need to see it close up, do you? It is, look. Do you want me to put it in a close up camera? You can put it close up camera. And, and then you can. Yeah. Think. So, Master, I love the logo actually. It's a great little thing. You've got the opti uh, opt opticus. The tentacle. The tentacle. The tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> We've just finished our D&D &D day. And it is a very long day. I've been DMing for six hours. And that was, it was just too long. So anyway, that, that can come out of the way. But you get a nice big box like this. Um, this is the Sinister Silver Edition of Ghost of Saltmarsh. This has the complete adventure in there, plus loads and loads of artifacts and handouts and maps and all kinds of stuff for, uh, for the DM to make their game more interactive. Have you previously seen any unboxing videos of this or heard about this? Not that one. I've seen the um, unboxing video for the Wardy Post. No, I have not. Okay, so this is what, this is what we do. And even the detail of the box, you've got there's um, a shark, a crocodile, um, it's not an octopus, that is actually a, a kraken. If you can get that, if you pull up the other screen, you'll get a bigger shot of it, I think. There we go. 
So you can see, here, well, I've got back up my fingers, there's the crocodile, get it there. And you can just see in there the stuff below the water come up to grab you. Um, and on the back, there is an A. Then that's actually part of the story. This entire box becomes part of the story. Um, so everything is of use, which is, which is actually really, really nice. Um, so we're going to open this little bad boy. It's a, it's a nice box. This is quite sturdy. Um, it's well done. It's quite a nice big box. And as I've mentioned, I've already unpacked this and unwrapped this and, and used it. And it's absolutely lovely. The first item is the DM Shield. Now, unlike the uh, reincarnated DM Shields, this is traditional size. This is much bigger, much taller. Um, I would have the other ones, but I've packed them up. Um, with some lovely, lovely artwork. Let's try and put that in front of the camera there without getting some reflection. I don't know if that will pick it up. There we go. And this, this, is, um, this is a scene, a custom painted scene that Beetle and Grimm uh, did commission. And the characters, the heroes, um, as part of that, are actually uh, pre-gen characters that people can play. And they've included that in the box. But, so, uh, as a player, you, you only get to see the outside, really. No. I get my tea. Um, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, uh, has a big battery going on. If you swap back to a big screen. I have a big screen. It's kind of like a kid's book as well. Yeah, it yeah. feels like it, but it's actually, I mean, that's some really good quality uh, item. It is just, I've got used to the reincarnated, which is a bit shorter. Oh, that's what I was going to say to you, because this is the same size as the one that I made. Yes. So I'm used to having that higher, and that, yeah. that's the right size for me, but you like it lower, so you can see the TV screen. So how yes. was it for you? I had my usual reincarnated board on the inside, yeah. because there's a lot of information here that I'm just not using just yet. So right. in, inside the DM Shield, is lots of information about boats, um, random encounters, and we've only just finished um, the caverns underneath the Haunted Mansion, which is the, the, first, the first mission campaign um, in the Salt Marks series. But it's really, it's, I, I, I was quite pleased with the quality yeah. for what it is. Okay. Um, and the fact that they did put this into Waterdeep, I don't, I don't think, but for future boxes, they will be doing it. So for Descending to Avernus, you will get a, a DM shield. So, so what, I've what I like about this is it's got the um, stuff that you'd have to go and look up and print off anyway. Because mm -hmm. It's got all of the uh, weapons and whole points and everything for all of your vessels. So I'm guessing in Avernus you're going to get the same sort of thing for the um, trucks, whatever it is. Possibly or vehicles, or yeah, as we've seen. And you're using your DM voice again. You've got all whispery quiet. <laughs> <laughs> which is, which is fun. Um, so we'll, we'll put that there. And then, so the next thing you get, this is actually the first item you get, is the welcome letter. So this is actually really, really nice. There is, um, from all the guys involved, one, two, three, four, five, um, and a breakdown, a contents list of everything that you get. Uh, and I just thought that was really, really nice. There's some advertising on the back for, um, for some uh, bit of grim gear, because obviously they don't just do this, they do a lot of accessories, uh, jewellery and t-shirts, but it's, it's bits and pieces like that. And then we have some maps. Now these are, um, I, I've seen these before, I mean, you've seen these in some of the older books. Um, if you purchased a map pack for Mad Mage, you would have seen something similar. I'll put that in front of the camera so you can see that as well. Um, but it gives you some really nice detail uh, about what's uh, in each room for the DM's views. So it says, you know, one bad guy, two bad guys, one orc. And you can use the key to understand uh, what's coming. Um, I would actually write on these, I'd, I'd make copies, but this is a really nice way of doing it. And I started doing these um, for my, my, some of my other maps. So have a look at those. And again, to kind of see what you think. Cool. So you've got entire entire map there. It's double-sided. Yeah, I remember ages ago, me and my friend, well, he was uh, DMing a game, and he had this, but just on a larger scale. Yeah. It looked exactly like this in the black and white. Um, yeah, which is pretty cool. I think we're finding rats. Big rats. <laughs> or 
Yeah, this is cool. So I'll just change the, oh, just change the view if I can. If I can see it. That one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah, back in five minutes. No, we're not. We're views. Okay, cool. So, so this, from what I take it, this is where you're supposed to put these different uh, monsters in the Yeah, market. it's just a really nice way. So when they come into the cavern, for example, yep. um, you know if they turn left or right exactly what they're going to encounter. So you don't have to read through and go, okay, we're in wrong one. Yeah. What should I read? Um, you've got a kind of pre-idea of, oh, that's where the treasure is, or oh, that's where the bad guy is. Yeah. Um, and you can uh, at least um, steer them in the right kind of direction, which mm -hmm. I think is quite nice. Now, one of the other items they, they've given you is a wipe clean um, map. Uh, this is called the Skull Dunes. Now, again, in uh, the Mad Mage pack, all of these maps were wipe clean, yeah. which I thought was great. So I started writing my notes on, yeah. but then as I packed them away, as I moved my hands around them, slowly I started wiping off the, uh, the details. Mm. Um, but I, it was nice to see that th this kind of item uh, has been put in there. So again, there's, uh, oh, there's that one there. And I'll just put that into the screen. I can't see what the camera is. One. <laughs> that one. Um, so you can see it's quite nice and shiny and reflective. Now, which one? Which one, Steve? That one? Uh, mine can, yeah. yep. There we go. So that's those. So right? I, I like that. I like that. I think they're great. As a DM yeah. map. As DM reference, they're perfect. Yeah. I, I, I would like to see it on slightly thicker. Paper. Thicker paper, yes, yes I, I agree. Like um, but I would probably stick that into a photocopier, print them off. I've also started using a clipboard so that I've got something I can quick, quickly write on. I think because it's a nice pack, I don't want to spoil it, yeah. even though some of the items I will do. Um, you also get a nice full colour map. This is Salt Marsh, the town. Um, this is also included in, in, in the book, but um, uh, it's nice that you've got a copy. And again, you can you know colour copy that. Get it printed, so you've got it, and it's all detailed. So you, it's numbered, so you know what exactly the locations are. Is is that that's not on the the? the no, it's not in here. Oh, so on the back. Yeah. No, it's not in there. Okay. So it's a, it's a again, it's a DM reference map, not something that I would potentially give to players. Okay. Um, but I would give them an unnumbered version, a clean right. version, if you like. So that's we do on Friday night fights is either a map of the continent playing on yeah. um, and I've got a few reference maps of Sean that I stick in front of the DM screen just for the players reference when they're looking at me yeah. so that's it, I, the ideal sort of thing that you can do with that but without the numbers on <laughs> so that something like that would I would also put into the player packs yeah. so the player packs is a nice little thing that I saw in another video and it's just a nice plastic folder where everyone has their own copy of the map um, the player version at least, mm -hmm. and then um, it allows them to make notes. So you could say, okay, well the haunted house is up here, yeah. but there's the magic shop, and I really want to visit the magic shop. So you make a note of that. And I, I, again, I find that quite quite nice. But that is already in the main campaign. More, more importantly, it doesn't allow them to make notes, it encourages them to make notes. <laughs> exactly. So something else I mentioned before, um, so the people on here, the heroes that are, are, are pictured on the, the DM shield, are also pre-generated characters. And they're all here. So here's you know, here's two for you. So you don't get two for you. standard adventure, do you? No, these are not so in a standard adventure. This has been extra content generated by Beedle and Grimm for oh, this I particular box set. Because it makes you pick it up. AKA Jumbo Deluxe. Jum Jambon Deluxe. Jambon. Jambon Deluxe. <laughs> I've got Gars, the deadly lizard folk lieutenant from the Mayor of the Dead Men. <laughs> but so, so here's the bit I like. We, and Naki Z. Yeah. So here's a bit I like. I've got um, Aquil Grimwater, um, who's a half elf druid. He's level one based on on it. They're all level one based on these. Okay. But as well as your usual flaws and bonds and that kind of thing and background history, they give you some quotes. So you can actually start your character if you are new to this and you go, "Well, how do I, how do I role play?" Our path is clear to me. Deep shade is clear to me. Mm. You can you can add these into your saying and encourages your players to say something. Um, and I, I think that's a really, really nice touch. Now, the other thing they've done, their backgrounds are tied into Salt Marsh, somehow, some way. Right. Um, just like in the starter kit, your pre gen characters were in and around the same area. So they all kind of connected to Fandanin, 
in this one they're connected to salt marsh. So like Aramil Greenwater, he's an aquatic half elf. I'm just a sea elf. Yep. Yeah. yeah. This is a coastal sea town. Yeah, throwing a sea elf. Um, one of these characters, I think you got it there, is a lizard. Yeah, lizard folk. Yeah. Lizard so, folk barbarian. Yeah, lizard folk barbarian. Yeah, yeah, so again, right. you've got your usual kind of fighter, cleric, elf. Um, we've got elf brother and sister, or half elf brother and sister. One's a ranger, one's a druid. Um, but then you've got, a, you know, a lizard troll. I mean, putting something else in there is, oh, is absolutely fine. Find that character on Oh, he's yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah, so there he is. is. So that's yeah. quite cool as a player because you get to. Spot you get a picture of him. Ah, yeah, that's my character. Yeah. So that, and that's like um, what's that? Two ships boarding each other, or yeah. they're attacking one yeah, ship. They're, they're, they're boarding a, a, another vessel. So they're the camera won't really pick this up. I might might do it on the big one. Um, but you've got if you switch to the little one, then or the big one rather, then you can see without trying to get the reflection. The brother and sister. The brother and sister see off. That's uh, a, that's a so that's Sanaki Z. Yeah. Even sorcerer. And then we got the uh, uh, fake folk. barbarian. And then uh, the girls. Oh, oh, he's got his own screen. So he's just swinging yeah, in. Cook. Because, you know, the master of the entrance, he yeah. is just swinging in. Um, up your service. I don't know if it's and right. I, I, I just thought that was great. And another thing I really liked about these and again this is all content from Beagle and Grimm so they've, they've given it some thought is if you look at um, Annie Z sorry I should check that down there um, Anaki Z is she's, she's level one she already has a wondrous tattoo, rare yeah, item yeah, a really tattoo yeah. of comprehension and I just thought that was great she's from distant shores she comes here she can activate the tattoo mm. and straight away she has this kind of unique power that none of the other players have and I really like that. And even the lizard folk guy, he's got um, this extra bite attack. He's got like a rage, and he can do bites. And I, I, again, I, I just thought that was absolutely fantastic. Um, okay, so if we switch cameras again, the next thing we've got, and I really like this. From a DM point of view, I hate random encounter rolls. Um, I hate them, because I, 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 I want the story around them. <laughs> this, again, is a Beetle and Crim's content. This is bonus encounters, high seas. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 random encounters that could happen with story content. So there's a background information. It could be a ghost ship. It could be a, uh, they've got one here called a carcass, which is a, a floating body. So when they uh, are on the boat or on the seas, and you just want some downtime and they're going to take a long rest or whatever they might do, you just say, look, you hear a thump. Okay, what, what was that? You look over the edge, there's a body, bump, bump against the boat. You know, maybe you laid out anchor or something, you're just sitting there. Okay, we pulled the body up. Now you've got a mini adventure. Well, he's got a shark bite. Oh, wow, okay, where's he going? There's a shark, right? Let's kill it, whatever. Um, or they might have a message. Um, but there's all kinds of bits in it. And you have um, some uh, quotes and scenes like that. So, have a quick look. Um, more from, obviously, this is all for DMs. Yeah. But to have, uh, from a player's point of view, to have this kind of. That's awesome. See? <laughs> <laughs> to have this really indigestion. Indigestion, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 there's, no, there's no spoilers. Well, I was going to say no spoilers, but go on then. So, one of the sailors on board has unwittingly been infected by cow's phase during his last shore leave and has a slard incubating in his stomach. Okay. In the middle of the night, the sailor becomes violently ill. If he's not already sleeping in the same quarters as one of the PCs, he will call out either for the cleric or the leader asking for help. After a few creepy, agonised pleas for help, a slard tadpole erupts from the sailor's stomach and attacks oh. the nearest PC. Now, what scene is that? That's Alien. That's Alien. Yeah. Now we have oh, a whole Alien that. scene on your pirate ship or on your ship. There's no escape, and that slard <laughs> is going to hunt you down. That is uh, scary. No, like, that, that's really that's a, that's a really good way of doing. It. But I mean, I don't. I just don't do random encounters. Exactly. Um, because, because there's no the, story content. The, the, it's just like, oh, uh, this thing pops up, attack it. Mm. Just by having those few lines, and it's a few sentences, yeah. you've now got, okay, no one gets a long rest tonight, yeah. now you've got this thing, and you could have some red shirts, yeah. or, you know, some extra crew members who suddenly gets attacked, and then you yeah. find it's shed its skin, now it's bigger, you've got Alien. And I think for players as well, if, if, you, if you look at those random encounters and you make a story around it, yeah. to build up to that set of random encounters, well, those random encounters is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, rather than just, just like Steven said, you know, it's like, right, kill this thing. Huh? What? Yeah. And you could, you could set the scene. So um, rather than having completely um, random, 
I like to plan my stories and campaigns. I know they're going to take a long rest. Because it's Salt Marsh, I know they're going to be on a boat. And I can say, right, well, I'm going to run this one because I won for that hour, just because. And that could be after lunch. You've, you know, you've, you've been here for. We run a D&D day, so we, we do like six to eight hours non stop D&D. But we get, get loads of pizzas and plenty of cups of tea because, you know, we're British. Um, and we just play non stop. And I think it's a great way of mixing something in. Um, after lunch, where you can have someone um, burst out of it, it, it's not a chest burster; it's a belly burster. Um, but I, I think it's great. How are we doing so far? So this this is chock full. It's still heavy, so there's still there's still a lot in there. Yeah, um, and that's just kind of paper stock at the moment. So we'll, we'll we'll come on to another bit. So these are some bits that I actually started doing uh, a few months back and these you kind of hang over your, your DM shield so here's your, your DM shield and you would put it up like that and you would say ah oh, whatever this is it's not exactly a griffin but it might be that's just to help set the scene yeah. for the players yeah. mm -hmm. and I started doing that a while ago with, with big kind of sheets of A3 um, if you are watching our Salt Marsh campaign um, on YouTube please do please subscribe please follow ring that little bell um, we have like an 80 inch screen behind me when I'm running that so these kind of pictures I don't put over the screen I just put on the big screen and all the players can see it um, viewers at home can see that as well but I, I really do like that like that idea and aspect of us um, so to give you kind of a, a sneak peek here's a few go go um, and some of these are really I mean fantastic artwork anyway and they, here's the extra bit that I like. On the inside, it tells you what chapter, what page you're on. Uh, so it's not like just random pieces of artwork. These tie into the stories. And you can, it means you can plan. So this is, there are several chapters in Salt Marsh. But it means that you can quickly prep by pulling out what you need to. Like chapter one, chapter two. I just need the first few things. I don't need the whole box. I just need what my players are going to do today. And it's a really nice way of, of putting this. I mean, it's like shrimp fighting. Um, shrimp fighting? Are they shrimps or lobsters? I'm not sure. But anyway, so you can put your bets on who's going to win. Um, and it's, it's a nice way of doing it. It's uh, fant some fantastic artwork. So, so for, for these, and these are the, like the. Um, um, oh, that one on the back so shrimp fight. Oh. That one is, is amazing. Not only like. Back for the sharks. Not only like settings, but maybe it could be. Um, certain characters that you encounter and then everyone can see what they look like rather than seeing like a model. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that one there that's on camera now, um, I mean, what, you know, an island full of undead. Yeah. Fantastic. You put up in your boat, you get out in your rowboat, you explore this uncharted island, and it's full of undead. Yeah. How the hell do you survive? I mean, yeah. it is absolutely fantastic. Yes. Yeah. And all of this artwork is in the book. Um, so if you buy the original uh, hardback campaign book, all this is in there. But just having it pre-printed is really, really nice. Um, again, some fantastic artwork. Now here's another bit that I really love. And um, I, again, be, even before the Waterdeep, uh, Waterdeep campaign, the Pandemonium, uh, not Pandemonium, Platinum set, had come out, I started doing something like this with the uh, encounter cards. So the official D&D encounter cards, um, I splashed out and I bought two sets of everything mainly so I could turn it into a triangle so that one side would face the players and the back would give me the details that was expensive yeah. in this set they've done it for you but they've done it on a bigger scale and again let's hold up the, the DM screen so that's what the players see and then if I, can, I put that in front there we go there's your encounter roll for initiative um, and we can go that way. Now, for me, from my view, I get quite a nice detailed uh, DM screen. Um, I get all the hit points, all the coverage, even all the background. It's a complete version from the Monster's Manual. This is not like the encounter cards, which are uh, leave out the kind of story bits and the descriptions. It is that story bit, yeah. 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 This in encourages that. It's, it's, it includes it, um, and it's bigger print. I mean, the cards are great, but they are quite small. Mm. Um, having this was fantastic. So I like to use my laptop, and I like to bring up that from D and D Beyond. We use D and D Beyond, um, and I like to have it on screen. This I don't need to. You get um, again in the Platinum Edition. You get a lot more. 
you get 40 odd, um, I think in here you get 20 odd. Um, but again, all the monsters that you need for this entire Swamp Marsh campaign are in here. Um, great artwork, and you can use them again. I mean, in, the, in here there's a goblin, there's a skeleton. You can use that in any campaign. So they're completely reusable. If you were to buy, if you were lucky enough to buy the Waterdeep set, you'd have those as well. Yeah. And I don't know if there's any dupl duplications. There might be. It doesn't matter. Um, and in uh, Descent for Avernus, that which is going to be the next platinum edition, you're going to get even more again. So as you know, I do all of this on Friday night first. Yep. I do uh, the player cards. I do the uh, creature cards. Yep. I spend a lot of time. Yes. That. So mm -hmm. this, what you're getting in the box, is not something you can't do yourself, because obviously we do do it ourselves. What we're saying is that for, for what you're getting here, uh, you are getting you know some really neat artwork, you're getting some additions, because uh, to try and put that on a little card is impossible, believe me, I've tried. And that is official, it's all official, it's all about boards so, licensed. So yeah. what you see on Friday Night Fights, um, that I have over, over the top of my DM shield, I don't have any status on the back because it's it's too small to be able to fit practically on a card. So I use the um, Gavrox Nine monster and yep. have cards behind my screen. So this is this is giving you some great artwork and it's giving the DM some um, some stats to refer to from the DM shield. The only thing I would say is probably for me because I like to play and count the cards up at the same time. Mm -hmm. Is you can't do both. Obviously, yes, yeah. you can't have the player cards up. But I I think they're they're great. Now, if you watch our Salt Marsh videos, um, again, it wasn't in episode one. We started using this from episode two. Um, you can see what I've done there. So, yeah, literally, we have um, the player tents, and then we have the this big encounter. It does take up a lot of room, but I love it. And I uh, completely agree. Time versus cost. Sometimes we don't get enough prep time, and I think this this, you know... Well, so I didn't have any uh, encounter cards pre-made for our last Friday night session because mm -hmm. I didn't have time to do it. And yeah. like I say, it does take me, it, it takes me all morning on Friday to you know, pull all the preach cards out, print off all the um, uh, pyramid or player tents and stuff like that. And having them ready to go, right, I just need to take this box with me. We're playing chapter one, I need these cards. It's that, That's where the, the big saving comes from. Mm. And I wouldn't want to play with the tired DM. Uh, DM so. <laughs> oh, do you want to? Yeah. But yeah, and, and there's some like that's one a oh, unique. Yeah. Um, so again, that you got a unique character that you're not going to see, but you've also got the regular character. There's a goblin. Yeah. The, it's so a that's normal a, goblin. That's a normal goblin straight out of Monster Manual. Yeah. And yes, you can get it on Google. And, and look at the background details. That is that's like everything from the from the Monster Manual. Yeah. yeah. Whereas yes. on, uh, on, even on D and D Beyond, on the account builder, you only get that from memory. Yeah. Because I do use the account builder on D and D Beyond, which is very good. But that's currently in alpha or beta. It's in alpha. It's still in alpha. So we got you know bits going on. Let's just take one. Oh, some of our players are stuck on the M twenty five. Um. So again, some fantastic artwork. I'll put up there. There you go. White balance. Um, and it's all it's, it, again it's all there it's everything you need in, 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 is in this box and it's still heavy <laughs> so we've taken a lot of stuff out there but again so so far we talk about cost versus time um, it is a lot of money to shut out and it's not you know this is something for um, oh, not serious D&D &D, uh, DMs and players this is, a, this is an investment uh, we tend to run our campaigns several times anyway with different groups. So it'd be nice, it, it, and it's nice to introduce new players to having these kind of things, and we have digital screen maps, we have uh, artifacts and bits and pieces. Um, speaking of artifacts, so we've, we've got a, a few bits here. So these are slight spoilers, because if you end up playing this game. Um, but look, so this is a, a hand cho or hand cholo. This is a uh, shark item, or shark totem. Oh no, this is the, this is not the totem. This is a shark totem. There we go, the shark medallion. Um, so here we go, if you can see that. Da, da, da. Lovely shark there, on a bit of uh, leather rope. And we have, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, Hazardoon, Hazardoon uh, badge. And you can pin that, you can stick it on. It's me, I am the chosen one. 
Um, so again, so there's an item there. You might not see that because of the light. Let's try and get it into the light. There we go. And come back to full screen. But have a look at those. I mean, these are, again, these are quite weighty. Um, these are some nice little items. Now in, uh, again, the Waterdeep uh, Platinum set, you got more. I think it was like five, six items. You got cups, you got loads of things. This is the Silver Edition. So you only got a couple. Um, I thought it was actually quite nice. That is, yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. As an artifact, you can give that to a player, or you know, like the rusty key or something. You can give them something nice that they can keep. And again, um, in regards to my player packs, you can't run away with them. <laughs> so you can't. You won't have a stranger on your on your table who decides, oh, I would really like that pin. I'll stick it on, and then they go home with it. You know, you, you <laughs> goes back in their player packs. And it goes back home with me, so that I, I keep my set complete. But it's um, even better for the role play as well, as a, as, as like a player, if they've got something something physical in their hand. They can something physical, and if that was a puzzle item, or might maybe it becomes a puzzle item, yeah. maybe it's just a targeting item. So the DM knows, well, who's got it now? Mm. Oh, you've passed it around. Why? Why am I always getting bad luck? Well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What could the reason be? <laughs> um, and I, again, I love that. It's not some that is not something I, I could make. I, I was thinking you could do something with like beach pebbles and paint something on. Okay, yeah, but um, that's really difficult to. Do. Yes, yeah. um, and not allowed from some beaches, if 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 you're honest. Um, so again, how do you think so far? Is that? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Do you yeah. want to play this game now? I think I would want to. <laughs> so all this stuff. No, it, yeah, it's just you got all these uh, different characters and, and stuff, and like looks like with, uh, you know, you don't have, uh, you've got the random encounters and stuff, and you, mm -hmm. you know, allowing DMs to build around that, which for me would make it more fun as well to play, go through a story, yeah, and then this artwork as well, it's beautiful. I think the artwork is is fantastic for me. Um, uh, you, you guys know, but my day job is a designer, so having this kind of the stuff. Um, it's nothing, uh, th as we said, it's not, it's not something you can't cre recreate. Um, it's time and if budget allows. Mm -hmm. So having this thing, you think, okay, I'm going to invest in this. And it's stuff that I can reuse, especially these monster cards. I can reuse those in other campaigns. Yeah. Um, but again, you, you get it, and it's still heavy. So to, to move on. <laughs> so this is something that we've had a few discussions about. Um, this is, I've kind of skipped to some of the others. So this is the entire hard book adventure in a printed module. Right. So this separates things, puts them out into, uh, this is uh, chapter one and chapter two. Okay. Just in that, so you don't have to carry a big book. And that big book, sometimes it gets wrecked and you've got fingerprints all over it. This is a reprint of those, but just in a nice handy volume. And we've kind of talked about smaller modules and things um, in the past. Um, everything is here. Some fantastic, beautiful artwork. Again, um, I'll put it on the big screen. It's Drizzt. I think that's Drizzt. I'm hoping it's Drizzt. I love Drizzt. And also, the appendices are collected. So everything you need, all the um, monsters are collected again, all the additional items, just for this book. This isn't just the, the monster items. Um, we've got... Uh, I've just lost it. So there's monster encounters. We've got some extra story co uh, content. We've got some more maps, um, which you could reprint and everything else. We've got game history, uh, when it's originally printed. Um, there's got another boat as well. I don't know if you can see that over there. There it is. Boat. Oh, wow. um, how to run a boat. Officers, crew, what they might need to do. Um, a, a really good, involved amount of uh, information if you're running those kinds of adventures. Really nicely detailed. Um, and again, these are this is in the main volume, but just in a handier, small volume. Again, you don't need... I can just, if I'm just running chapter one, chapter two, I just need this book. And I can skip to uh, the appendices if I need to. So I only need to carry these two. If this is going in someone's backpack, I don't have this big hardback book. Hmm. But I have um, something I can reuse. And there's the map again. So we see it's just the same map as what we've seen yeah. before. Okay. Um, and everything is there. All the artwork is still there. Everything is kind of nice and lovely. So this is what, so I know this from, would be more from DM's perspective, but mm -hmm. this image here, 
has has its own story and plot. Yeah. This is a random. Uh, this is an encounter. If I'm so this right. is part of the story, of the Abbey Ruins, yep. which ties in. Um, you know, with, we've got the Skull Dunes. Uh, this is some kind of un- I don't know. I haven't read it properly yet. But this is some kind of uh, undead island, mm. and there is so much stuff there. It's yeah. part of you know the main story. It all ties in. They're all interconnected stories, all revolving around Saltmarsh. So yes, there is one big antagonist, but there are similar stories. And if you play the pre-gen characters, you might tie into those personally. And I think that's a really really nice touch. Mm. Now the box is getting lighter because those are heavy, um, but that is a reprint of the book. Do you think that's useful from a DM point of view? Yes, I do, because it's, it's breaking it all nicely up. So, yep. I mean, even to the point where you could play um, the different chapters. You can skip different it. Groups. You can skip anything, again, with any of the, the D&D stuff. Um, you know, even Mad Mage. You've got 23 levels of, uh, of dungeons. Just skip to one you like. It, it could be fun. Uh, you know, it's up to you to invent some way of getting there. There's all kinds of ways to get there. I, I think that's, that's one of the most useful things. Yeah. The, uh, the, the appendix so you know you can leave the adventure open on the page you was on and skip to some reference yep. that you want to look up you haven't got that one big fork you don't have to stick post-its in I often use my book uh, with notes plus uh, D&D Beyond so I've got multiple references going on at the same time and I just love that I can have one under the other both of them open I can flip between the two really really quickly now these bits is the reason I wanted it. So all this is also what they're doing. They're going to do this again in December, uh, into a bonus, and they did that in the uh, Platinum Waterdeep edition. But this is the reason I wanted it. This is I love handouts. Yeah, and you know I do too. Yep. Um, <laughs> oh, now oh. when we were, I say when we were younger, but when we when we kind of first started getting into into D and D, we would have done the whole kind of putting some paper into yeah. like tea staining yeah. and hang it out to dry and then try it, you've got calligraphy. Um, that's before we had home computers and uh, home printers that we actually uh, would last. Now we've got laser printers and copiers and you know, this is a fantastic way of doing things. But these are um, designed, they're on a nice different quali- quality uh, yeah. paper. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so there is texture to it as well. As texture. Yeah. Um, some of these are double-sided, do have a look. Some of these are, you know, there's a goblin map, for example. Oh, oh yeah. You know, you, you capture a goblin and you're tasking <laughs> yeah. to draw you a map. Um, <laughs> there is some of it. Right, so it's really, really nice. Um, all different kind of uh, shapes and sizes. Some of these things. Uh, if you switch back to the to the cam, you've got again look, shapes and sizes. Just a, and a different backgrounds and backing and, and textures. They're all kind of really nice thick paper. It's good quality stuff. Um, and again, with my player packs, they're nicely protected and looked after. They can stay in each other's uh, player pack and then next session they go, oh yeah, I remember that handout. Mm. There's a secret code on these. You know, we're using different fonts. Look at that. I, lo- I love the feel of some of these. Yeah, I can. That's got this some stuff. Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, some really nice touches, and again, um, have a look at that one. So, this is really cool as well. Yeah, I, I like the texture stuff as well. It's, it's quite. And that actually might take you some time to read through. Again, some of these, um, some of the fonts or hand handwritten style of fonts is a bit hard to read. Um, yeah, but that's that's all part of the. Yeah. The now you can imagine someone. We've we've got someone in our game called Josh. Um, who he did a fantastic impersonation of your character, um, <coughs> but he's done some great readouts, yeah. um, and you can imagine him just doing a, a, a quirky voice and, and reading these back. Yeah, um, but this is my favourite one. So this again is um, a handout, and it's completely distressed. As and you find this underwater, so this is completely waterlogged and distressed on purpose. Not only um, did the printer agree to do that. But in, in other unboxing videos that I've seen, they all have the folds in the same place. So I don't know how they managed to do that, but I thought it was great. I, I love the idea of that. Yeah. He's getting into it now because it's a diary. <laughs> so this is, this is uh, some kind of captain's diary kind of thing. Um, they've, um, I don't know, spoilers, maybe spoilers. I don't know if you're watching it this far, too late, there are already spoilers. Um, of his uh, Discover This Island. And so day one, yes, our men, we, we're starving hungry. Oh, we found a deserted island. Oh, day two, there's someone out there. They're watching us. 
Day three. Oh my god, my men are half my men have gone. The, I mean, the detail on this is is pretty impressive, even to the point where this paper is thick enough mm-hmm. not to show what's printed on the other side. Yeah. So it's yeah. obviously intentional that you've got this ghosted text yeah. printed, um, print coming through from the other side, you know, to make it appear as if it is it is waterlogged. Because I saw that at the bottom because there's nothing there. Yeah. I'm like, oh, is that, is that some sort of secret message? But it's not. It's it is that. It's, it is that. Um, yes. I, I, that's and and that is actually uh, a campaign hook. That if they read it and if they take note of it, if they but you can imagine players passing that round the table and then having their own read when they've got a quick five minutes. Yeah. Oh, what's this bit? And picking up different bits of the information, especially if parts of it you know that one, two, maybe three people have a different hook to different paragraphs of that story. Mm. And that each one is gonna pick up something different. I've got goosebumps just thinking about how good that could be. Um, you, could, you could really kind of do something nice with that. It's a lovely touch. Um, and I was really pleased with that. Again, personal investment from me to my players, not just one table, but potentially several tables. And these, stories, these particular stories, Salt Marsh, is um, quicker. This is a two year campaign. Um, especially for our D&D days because we play six to eight hours um, so for us uh, you know we could do some really nice stuff with this um, and I'm quite eager to see players reactions as you hand these items yeah, out around yeah. the table oh, so he's still there I just see the thing is I was just trying to yeah just read what was under what is under all the splodges it's like just get just getting there stuck are, into There are it. clues, yeah. There was yeah. Like, what's hidden there? What have I? What part have I missed? Yeah, because then it, your message, well, your understanding of the message could be completely different. Like I said, to yeah. another characters, uh, as well. Yeah. And I, yeah. not that I would pay one hundred and seventy-five pounds for that. <laughs> but, but, but <laughs> yeah, but the all whole, of this, with the whole thing, yeah. with all of this, I am. I well, I was tempted, and I did. So again, thank you, uh, Beale and Grimm. Now, so we're not finished, we've still got more. Um, so the next thing they do, uh, more spoilers potentially, is uh, a white clean map. This is a dry white map um, of a, but it's double sided. So we have um, a boat, this is the sea ghost, and you have um, each level, variety as you go down. You got a nice handy key, um, but with our new acetate that we've recently got, because we use a digital screen, we now put acetate over the top, we could quite quickly um, keep the TV out on the, uh, on the table, put this over the TV, yeah. and then put the acetate over that, just to help flatten it down. Um, the trouble with these acetate things, I, I'm not a big fan. Uh, I have played, used a Pathfinder maps in the past, um, and I much prefer the cardboard ones, but it's because they have these bends and the folds. Yeah. And I don't want to roll it, and I don't want to kind of do it too much just in case it breaks. But having this on a steady surface and then put some acetate down to flatten it out works beautifully. Um, and then suddenly you take them off the, the digital screen, which is great, but sometimes you want something more tactile. This is nice. And this is, you know, a direct representation of the boat, the Sea Ghost. Now, on the back of that, you've also got a generic boat. So again, if they, they come across um, a pirate ship or a ghost ship, um, one of the uh, bonus encounters is a ghost ship, or they buy their own boat, you could have this. So here you have the boat on some water, there's some sharks swimming underneath, um, or you make up your own boat. Um, like in uh, Waterdeep, spoilers, um, you get to have your own uh, tavern, your own bar, and you get to the map of that, you get a deed of having it, of ownership. Here, this is your own boat. You can put whatever you want in there. You could divvy this up. This is my room, this is your room, this is my room. Have your own quarters. So I love that kind of attention to detail. And again, that is just um, of the sea ghost. So again, would you make use of that as a, as, as, DM and pl- as a player? Would you like to see that or just some kind of generic representation of a boat or would you actually like when the sea goat mentions sea ghost not goat uh, mentions that there's a small lifeboat there yeah it'd be nice to be able to see it yeah and in that sort of detail as well 
um, it would be, be nice rather than having like a just like a yeah um, a drawn out ship generic yeah. ship yeah. yeah and DM yes but definitely under the S tape because I agree that, that that's not it's bent I mean even even there it's just it's too strong yeah, it's it too is strong. really really thick stuff um, it's you know uh, I'm not sure if that's well, I don't know what that's called, but it's it's lovely, but it is quite thin. So, so yep. you're talking about your your own boat. One thing that would yep. be great to have as well, as well as all this other stuff you get in anyway, is that that generic boat on some handouts. So turning that into some yep. handouts and giving that to the players, so they can draw on it and you know divvy up what quarters they've got. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff. That's so good I'm going to steal that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll do that. That's fine. Um, and the last item in here is uh, a very. It's kind of like a canvas print. It's not canvas, but it's like a um, conqueror paper, that kind of thing. Is double sided again. This is a map of the styes, uh, one of the medium missions. And again, it's something that you could put on a wall. You can put it up again under the acetate so people can um, see where they want to go. Um, again, it's numbered, so you're kind of giving some clues away to what places to visit, or you just keep it as a, you know, for us, we, uh, if you remember, we used to have a treasure map up there, yeah. but now we've got this, we can put that up there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And it's also double sided, so there's some extra locations. Um, we've got Landgrave's Folly. Temple of Hrazodun, which is the symbol that's on the stone. Oh, um, yeah, so yeah. you've got that. Yeah. So again, it, everything kind of ties in. Sounds like a sharp bear. Yeah, but look, he's been eaten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That. And there's some skulls on there. I have no idea what that's about, but I want to find out now. <laughs> um, what's it feeding? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. That's, uh, yeah. so that's great for Lovely, me. lovely quality and, paper. And, and to be fair, you could put that on the wall as well, even if you didn't want to use it as a map resource on the table. Yeah, that's a good idea. Behind you. Yeah. So again, I'll use that idea as well, thank you. Um, so again, some really, really nice quality stuff. Um, and as I mentioned before, the, uh, the box is also part of the set. It has a, dis it's not, um, it's lovely printed, um, but the print has this kind of, it's a metal lock box, yeah. and it has some distress on there as well. But that, there's uh, uh, an A on there, and that ties into the adventure as well. So even then you can say, here's the, you have it to one side, Here's the metal lock box that you guys find. Yeah. Okay, we'll you know smash it open. What's inside? Well, let's find out. Here's some handouts, or here's whatever it is inside. I haven't read that bit yet. Um, we're going to find out. But everything from the box. Um, the only thing that, that that doesn't have a part in the story is the um, the, the bird up bird. sack. Um, oh, it doesn't have a part in the story, which I think oh, they need no. to. They should have put that in the bonus adventures. Yeah, you yeah. find a sack. So, um, yeah. And there's something inside. So, or yeah. well, maybe that's how you capture the slug. It, it, you capture it, put it in the sack. It's like, <laughs> you, you find that though, don't you? Yeah, you do. So well, I, would, I would put that in the sack, in the sack. Yeah. With, with some, you know, stuff yeah. to fill yeah. it up, and, and, and that would be how you would open the adventure. I think it's yeah. great, and all, and also just to uh, so this is all Beetle and Grim, but to digress from Beetle and Grim, there's also a company called uh, Realm Smith. Um, they do. They've also just done talking a sword. Storm King's Thunder. Um, Storm, Storm King's Thunder. Um, it's a, they've, got, they've got a couple of live streams. They also do a live stream of miniature painting. Uh, it's a great feed. I do encourage you to, to check it out. Um, but they've started doing uh, subscription boxes in the post where you get loads of miniatures, loads of paints. You get a gift like a mug and stuff like that. The box turns into a DM shield, but also you get a candle. Now the candle, I was like, well, what does a dungeon smell like? I wasn't too, wasn't too fast. To be honest, sorry, Rum Smith, but I love the idea of some kind of salty seawater coastal smell, briny, something like that. You could, I don't know if we could get away with it where we are, but a kind of salty smell. He's like, you're in salt marsh. Oh, it's not salty. Well, that'd be great. <laughs> not the, the dead shark. You want to smell like the dead shark? Oh, that smells <laughs> oh, really bad. But having that kind of the briny smell. So there's an idea, Rum Smith. Um, We'll go halves on that. Kickstarter, maybe. I don't know. Some, some, some right. sort of watery scent spray. Yeah. Well. It may not be. They yeah. probably don't even. Yeah, they probably don't. Even. <laughs> don't get them mixed up at home. Yeah. Oh, why does it smell like the sea here? So I absolutely. I, I was. I was really chuffed. And it again. Uh, thank you again to Beard and Grim. 
Um, the packaging they put on there, it arrived completely safe and sound. Your goblins did a very, very good job of packing it, um, but slap them anyway. Um, it was just that just the UK orders were late. Uh, and I was like, oh, I haven't had it for episode one because you know we, our stuff is scheduled anyway. And I was, I was like, oh, but I got it for episode two. So again, thank you. So final thoughts before we kind of end this video. I was really, really chuffed yeah. with this. Um, final thoughts? I'd say I like it, um, especially with all this. You got these small letters as well that yeah. are better printed in a certain way, and also with. Uh, you know, with the use of, use of the maps, yep. well, visual aids as well. For, the visual for aids, the, the hand, the tactile, it really kind of uh, immerses you. Something else, so we talked about smells, is sounds. Um, now, again, we're going off topic a bit, but anyway, Sirenscape. Uh, so, uh, Ben Loons, who's the, the owner of Sirenscape, um, I, they recently released a set of uh, official D&D Saltmarsh sounds. Um, if you buy a subscription, you get access to all of them, um, all of the official D&D stuff, plus loads and loads of fantasy stuff. Um, I did, I coughed up seven quid. Thank you, Ben. Um, and it's great. Every uh, uh, level in this is categorized with all the sounds. So you can have the smell of the sea, and you can have the sound of the sea. Um, and all the battles and encounters, and the monster noises, they're all in there. And I think it's a great addition. So you've, you could have these tactile things, it's a great story. It really is fun. If you, it starts in a haunted house. Um, it's a proper Scooby Doo mystery, and it becomes pirates. I mean, who doesn't like pirates? You love pirates. So it's a, it's a great kind of uh, story all round. They're short, so you can jump in and out as much as you need to. You can add in ghost stories as much as you want to. The tactile uh, artifacts, the badges, the medallions. These are all uh, lovely, lovely pieces. Um, and then you can have the sound of that as well. Now, Beedle and Grimm have also recently done a deal uh, with Sirenscape, so Sirenscape are going to be doing uh, Descent into a Burst as well. And if you, uh, I don't know if you will, maybe you will, maybe you won't, um, there's, a, there's a discount. Now, I say there's a discount, so Descent into a Burst, do you know how much it is? No. What, so the Platinum Edition? Platinum Edition. Okay, Platinum Edition. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know much of the story either, so... So, I don't know much of the story, but I'm going to do it anyway, I think. So, it's $499 for a Platinum Edition. Now, you get all of this and more. You get probably twice as much, maybe three times as much. You get the monster cards, you get DM Shield, you get broken down into modules, you get all the handouts, you get artifact titles like this, but... You also get a discount for Sirenscape, you get a discount codes for D&D Beyond. You uh, also get, um, if they're doing the same thing, which I'm assuming they are, the minis. Right, okay. Mm. You get about 20, 30, 40 minis, plus you get um, the Mad Max mini. We should be calling it Mad Max, but it is. It's kind of like a Hellfire vehicle that you can take the stuff off, you take the driving seat off, you put mini inside. Um, it doesn't come painted, there might be a painted version, but it doesn't, the ones that I've seen doesn't come painted, which is from WizKids. So um, it's an official uh, WizKid Nogzors miniatures um, in the box, and the box is huge. And if it's anything like the Waterdeep, you know, I think they've learnt lessons from the Waterdeep version, yeah. and I think they're gonna do more, fingers crossed, I hope they do. Um, but I'm looking to that, that to be my next investment. Um, now, uh, Descent, Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus comes out in September. The Beedle and Grimm edition won't come out until October. I wasn't planning to run it until next year anyway, so it kind of fits in. I, I, uh, I, I think this sells it me. So, you know, from, from, from Math's point of view, I know how much time I spend on again this sort of stuff myself time and so cost you yes you could do all this yourself well you can do this yourself but you could do all the handouts you can do all the monster cards you can do everything yourself you can sell that you want that will take you time if you don't have the time or even if you do have the time you know seriously take a look at how much time you're spending and what you're spending on resources and doing yourself as well anyway and then cost that up against it. So this is, you know, it sounds like a lot of money. It's $175, so 140 quid, mm -hmm. plus 40 quid post packaging, mm -hmm. 180 pounds. 
it is saving you a lot of time. It does mean you can get up, you can go out in the morning, you can grab your resources um, for that session, and you're ready to go. And you know the players do like this. I know when I do on Friday night fights, it's mm. something they remember, especially when they just read the letters out and you know. And, yep. and the puzzle boxes and stuff like that. So most of the, most of the feedback we get from viewers from who have watched it on uh, we're live on Twitch on Friday nights and uh, who have watched our back catalogue um, on YouTube is the fact that they it's the, it's those bits for them as well because we they know that we enjoy it around the table um, when it's revealed to us what it is especially things like the puzzle box um, they it, it it brings the, the viewer um, into into the stories. That, that, even more so, and I, I, again, I love those kind of uh, things that pull people in. So you know, in, in terms of relative cost, yeah, it's a it's a big outlay, but over the long term, it probably doesn't doesn't cost that much different. Hmm. You know, if you by the time you spent the time on doing it yourself, the time you actually spent resources for doing it yourself, um, you can easily spend hundred pounds. You know, over mm -hmm. a, over a longer period of time. Yeah. But, um, to have this ready to go. Yeah. And from a player point of view? I'm, I'm impressed, I like it. I think would, would you be excited to, to suddenly get these, oh, what's it? wow, wow, wow. Yeah, and, and yeah, talking about that as well, and for, like you said, for Demi, is saving time as well, and you know, putting more cash, but also from a, a player point of view, if you're getting something like this in, in your hands, that you haven't had to make yourself, and, and it's already this much detail, I can get into more into my character than you know maybe reading it off a printed piece of paper. Yeah. In, yeah. You know, in a so the, and and that's it. Having Times New Roman on a sheet of A4, <laughs> crisp and clean, laser printed. Yeah. And here you get. Wow, what is this? Yeah. Um, I I do find it more. To, to do that yourself would would take a very long time. A long time. You, you, yeah. yeah. You're really talking about something that's getting um, built most people's creative abilities. And I, I do remember the times when I was a kid that I've had pieces of paper stuck on trays with trays with tea yeah. bags on. <laughs> like and, and that was great. When we used to try and get calligraphy, and then you, you use the wrong ink, and the ink would run. It's like, oh, damn. Um, and then you tried doing it first, and writing on it, and it never worked. But I, I think overall, I've absolutely uh, really enjoyed this. Um, again, really we've only yeah. done sort of two episodes of Salt Marsh as we're filming this. So I'm looking forward to unveiling more um, as the story progresses. Yeah. Um, so again, if you're watching this, do check us out on YouTube for our Salt Marsh videos. Um, they will be coming soon. We're going to save up four or five and then release them as a bundle. Um, but we have a whole back catalogue of Storm King's Thunder, Mad Mage, Horn, Cl Horn Enclave, Heist. Um, especially our Friday Night Fights live stream, um, which is every fortnightly Friday. Although we're taking a break because it's, it's summer for us and we're taking some holidays. Um, and there's so much more to come. Um, I'm really kind of chuffed with, with doing this. Again, this is personal investment. It's because I wanted to. Um, I absolutely love the idea. And it saves me so much time. Um, and that's it. So I think we're good. Yep. Thank yeah. you for watching. Um, and maybe we'll, see, maybe we'll do, do another one of these. Maybe we'll do one when, we, when December to Avernus comes out. Who, who knows? It'll be a bigger box. <laughs> with posters and, and everything. So... Uh, Big Lang Grim, thank you again. Um, I said a big thank you on the on the Salt Marsh second episode, but this this is this is great. Um, I did chase the goblins. I was like, where is it? Where's the UK edition? Oh, I've been delayed. Oh, come on, goblins! You, you know, you've got to get this out. And, and, and I was um, and I, I was so into this. I I, I just wanted it, um, and it finally turned up. And I was so it was like Christmas all over again. I was so excited. Um, but yeah. Okay, thank you very much for watching, um, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. See you then. Bye bye. See you later. Yeah, this is a pretty cool game. I I, I like. It with all, with all.